Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited. Approaching Mach 5, Strata Launch executes TA-1 powered flight. Is Starship really ready for a third test launch? NBAA takes umbrage with Biden's punitive tax treatment. Welcome to Airborne Unlimited. I'm your host, Holland Lee. Let's get into today's stories. Approaching Mach 5, Strata Launch executes TA-1 powered flight. Strata Launch is reporting that it has successfully completed the first powered flight of the Talon A test vehicle TA-1. This first flight represents a major milestone in the development of the country's first privately funded reusable hypersonic test capability. Primary objectives for the flight test included accomplishing safe air launch release of the TA-1 vehicle, engine ignition, acceleration, sustained climb and altitude, and a controlled water landing. Dr. Zachary Crever, president and CEO of Strata Launch, said, quote, Today was a great day for the Strata Launch team. I am extremely proud of their perseverance to reach this point. The successful outcome of the test is the direct result of the team's technical prowess and professionalism. While I can't share the specific altitude and speed TA-1 reached due to proprietary agreements with our customers, we are pleased to share that in addition to meeting all primary and customer objectives of the flight, we reached high supersonic speeds approaching Mach 5 and collected a great amount of data at an incredible value to our customers." End quote. Concurrent to TA-1 testing, Strata Launch is progressing on the manufacturing of TA-3, the second fully reusable vehicle in the Talon A product line. The company is also beginning modifications to its additional launch platform, a modified Boeing 747-400. And after the break, Women of Aviation Worldwide celebrate strides. For 15 years, the Aero News Network has provided live coverage of the annual Aircraft Electronics Association Convention and Trade Show, and we are pleased to do so again this year. Join us March 19th at 8.30 a.m. Central for the AEA opening session and exciting new product introductions. And then again on March 20th and 21st for in-depth interviews with the newsmakers in the avionics industry. Live from the exhibit hall floor at airborne-live.net. I think it's a very important thing to share the joy and love of flying. Our customers fly to remote places. They use our products to go places that are difficult to get to. Hearts has been an excellent partner for Whip Air, uh, just in terms of your product support, as well as keeping an eye on the market and developing new products that meet demands. And it is that shared experience and the joy of flying that brings us all back and charges all of our batteries up. Welcome back. Now let's take a trip around the patch for some shorter stories. Women of Aviation Worldwide Celebrate Strides Women of Aviation Worldwide celebrated the attainment of female licensure in the Canadian market after seeing it climb to 12% in 2023, with 6,354 female-identifying pilots issued by their domestic regulator, Transport Canada. The narrow majority of all Canadian licenses were recreational, with 52% coming in at the private pilot level. It's a first step towards future staffing and a 58% uptick since 2010. 65% of those cards were sent to candidates between 20 and 39 years of age. Allied Pilots Association backs age 65 retirement age. Citing the hiring downturn throughout the domestic carrier industry, the Allied Pilots Association says it believes supply is, quote, sufficient to meet forecast demand, end quote, so the mandatory Part 121 retirement age of 65 should not be changed. APA President Ed Sicker said, quote, The perceived pilot shortage is over, eliminating any further need for policymakers to consider changing the retirement age, end quote. To further back up their position, the group quoted investor commenter T.D. Cowan, who said they, quote, now believe the demand is fulfilled and expect hiring to normalize in 2024, end quote. 
Skyborne continues expansion plans with order for 20 Piper 100i aircraft. Piper's trainer-specific iteration of the PA-28 remains popular with Skyborne Airline Academy, with another order for 20 more filling out the manufacturer's order books. The school already has almost a dozen on the books, with an initial order placed in late 2023 as the first element in a multi-year fleet agreement. The newest deal will run about $8 million for Skyborne, buying them even more of the stripped-down, cost-effective Archer derivative. Duncan Aviation adds drone repair to capabilities. Duncan Aviation's Texas facility now supports uncrewed aircraft, starting work on commercial delivery drones from the surrounding area. Now that drones have moved from the realm of the hobbyist to the world of actual money makers, the accompanying support infrastructure will grow to ensure they stay airworthy, safe, and profitable. Duncan's team in Dallas, Texas says they're ready to, quote, provide scheduled and unscheduled work, troubleshooting, wire harness repair, GPS signal inspection, and replacement of failing components, end quote. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Let's get back to the rest of the news. Is Starship really ready for a third test launch? SpaceX is gearing up for the third flight test of its Starship rocket, tentatively scheduled for March 14th, pending regulatory approval. The aerospace giant has announced that a live webcast of the flight test will commence about 30 minutes prior to liftoff. Starship's second flight test marked several significant milestones and provided critical data for the continued rapid development of the spacecraft. Unlike conventional testing in a lab or on a test stand, these flight tests put the hardware in an actual flight environment to maximize learning. The upcoming third flight test is set to build on the insights gained from previous flights while attempting a series of ambitious objectives. These include the successful ascent burn of both stages, opening and closing Starship's payload door, a propellant transfer demonstration during the upper stage's coast phase, the first ever relight of a Raptor engine while in space, and a controlled re-entry of Starship. Additionally, the mission will feature a new trajectory, with Starship targeted to splash down in the Indian Ocean. This new flight path is designed to allow SpaceX to test new techniques like in-space engine burns while ensuring maximum public safety. And after these messages, NBAA takes umbrage with Biden's punitive tax treatment. For over 30 years, the Massive Sport Plane Resource Guide has provided expert, credible information, evaluations, and critical analysis of all that the sport aviation world has to offer. The all-new Digital Sport Plane Resource Guide is coming with extensive multimedia features that are constantly updated, and even more comprehensive online guide to all things sport aviation. Available soon. www.sportplane.com A special month is coming to Sun and Fun's 50th fly-in celebration. Multi-platinum singer Dylan Scott. Out here living, living my best life, yeah. Dylan Scott with special yeah. guest Sarah Evans. Ponytail girl grown up to be a woman, now she's gone in a blink of an eye. Get your tickets now. Be a part of the kickoff celebration for Sun and Fun's 50th fly -in. Go to flysnf.org. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details. Welcome back. NBAA takes umbrage with Biden's punitive tax treatment. President Biden's State of the Union address ruffled feathers at NBAA thanks to comments pointing to a crackdown on one of his easier targets, corporate jets. 
The Biden admin put out a press release following the speech, taking aim at, quote, making big corporations pay their fair share in taxes, end quote. As part of that mission, they outlined a tax plan that would raise the corporate tax rate to 28 percent to, quote, crack down on tax avoidance by large multinationals and big pharma, end quote, and, quote, eliminate tax breaks for corporate jets, end quote. President Biden believes corporations and wealthy people who use corporate and private jets should pay their fair share. That's why he would eliminate a tax break that gives preferential treatment to corporate jets compared to commercial aircraft. He would also increase the fuel tax on corporate and private jet travel so that corporate executives and other wealthy Americans pay their fair share for the use of airspace and other public services related to air travel." End quote. Naturally, the NBAA opposed such a measure, with head Ed Bolin weighing in, quote, Of course, every American business should pay the taxes they owe, but President Biden has unfairly chosen to target those who use business aviation, even though the vast majority of flights are taken by U.S. companies to help them compete effectively in a global marketplace, end quote. And that's our show for today. You can catch episodes of Airborne on YouTube, Roku, or Fire TV. Just search for Aero News or Airborne, and don't forget to follow us on social media. Thanks for watching.